you can interact with this random wall and waterfall. You can't inspect anything in the first room of the game until you first meet Flowey. Once you meet him, you can go back and inspect the flowers. If you press X or Shift five times on the title screen, you'll get an activity level. Activity level A appears if you have completed the neutral ending. Activity level B appears if you have completed the pacifist route. And activity level C appears if you have fought Sans twice or have killed him. If you don't have any data, no information will appear instead. And additionally, if you type in ball on the title screen, you'll get a unique sound that only plays here. Undertale has a total of 93 different endings that you can achieve. There exist two different dog error screens in the game and only appear if an error has occurred, such as loading a corrupted save. Deltarune was teased in the Nintendo Switch version of Undertale way before its announcement, where Clam Girl was changed to Goner Clam Girl and mentions you'll be meeting her neighbor Susie soon. If you unplug the controller on the Xbox version of Undertale, you get some funny messages. These messages actually differ from room to room. Additionally, the Xbox Xbox version of Undertale is the only version of Undertale that is yet to be data mined due to it being on hardware that is extremely hard to do so on. The cursed 3D tutorial model that Toby uses a lot in Undertale marketing is actually canon according to him on Twitter. There is unused code in the game designed for monsters to drop items. It is unknown as to why this ended up getting unused. Toriel has red eyes in her battle sprite. This is actually a mistake left over from Toby Fox from the demo version of Undertale. Additionally, Toriel isn't meant to kill you either and was also something left over from the demo. If you actually sit still and wait for Toriel to come back to you in the ruins, she'll actually call you and say that a dog is trying to steal her phone, stating that it'll take longer than she would have thought, implying that you should progress forward. Originally in Genocide, the game was going to delete itself, however Toby couldn't get it to work properly and instead went for what the game does today. We all know that this is what Kara looks like, but there is an unused version of Kara in the game's files that looks like this. YouTuber MattPat from Game Theory gave the Pope a copy of Undertale. Years later, Megalovania was played for him during a performance. It then proceeded to go viral on the internet. If you died to a Mega Flowey on the original PlayStation 4 version of the game, originally the game would crash like the PC version. However, it was changed in an update to simply reboot the game automatically because it scared console players. This version of the game where it simply reboots is now used for all console ports. Speaking of console versions of Undertale, every console version of Undertale has something unique to them underneath Papyrus's sink, and they are actually connected and tell somewhat of a story. In the PlayStation 4 version, there's a dog shrine, which you can donate to with gold. The more gold you pay, the more decorated the room becomes. On the Nintendo Switch version of the game, the dog shrine is completely wrecked, and after you return to the room when you beat Metaton, there's a unique battle with Mad Mew Mew, which is a battle that contains a special soul to demonstrate the power of the Nintendo Switch's Joy-Con controllers. Mad Mew Mew is actually Mad Dummy's ghost as after you fight with Mad Dummy they go on to possess the Mad Mew Mew doll. Finally, in the Xbox version of Undertale, the dog comes back, cleans up the room, and then allows you to gamble, which funnily enough raised the rating of Undertale to T in the ESRB, making the Xbox version of Undertale the only version of Undertale to have a T rating. After defeating Metaton X in the Xbox version of the game, Mad Mew Mew will end up taking the casino job. Speaking of Mad Mew Mew, the Nintendo Switch version of Undertale is the only version of Undertale that contains the ghost fight light motive in the four main areas of the game. Nabsab look in the ruins, Mad Mew Mew in Snowden, Mad Dummy in Waterfall, and Muffet in Hotland. And if you're wondering where Mad Mew Mew is now, according to the Undertale alarm clock dialogue, they're now a virtual streamer. Speaking of the alarm clock, originally there was going to be an Undertale alarm clock app that would deliver dialogue from different characters of the game. However, development of the Alarm Clock app has stopped due to a variety of different situations including the development of Deltarune. So instead, Toby Fox posted parts of the dialogue on the Undertale website. Funnily enough, there's dialogue from Undyne stating that Sans did a finger pointy arm crossy dance implying that Sans has canonically done the default dance from Fortnite. Speaking of weird things Sans has done, Sans won the ultimate Tumblr sexy man after beating several characters, and weirdly enough, Toby Fox wrote a 
fan fiction about the event? A very old live stream of an old build of Undertale was played on fan gamers Twitch and is still viewable today. There's even a stat included called EN, which is unused for the final game. In all media regarding Sans, he is always depicted as wearing pink shoes, such as in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. However, nowhere in either Undertale or Deltarune does he actually wear pink shoes. Additionally, in Smash Ultimate's unused textures, there exists a texture for Sans's blue eye in the game. And if you're wondering how Sans actually got into Smash, it was because he beat the creator of Smash, Masahiro Sakurai, in a match allowing him to put Sans in the game. Speaking of Megalovania, Megalovania had originated from an Earthbound ROM hack created by Toby. So the song Getting Into Smash was a pretty big deal because of said origins due to Nintendo's history of disapproving of people modifying their games. Smash's remix version of Megalovania contains light modus from Asgore, Toriel's, and Papyrus's theme, meaning that Toby was able to sneak in a small chunk of the Undertale soundtrack in this one song. Have a listen. Toby took a lot of stuff from Spongebob to make this game, as in Flowey's theme, you can hear the Spongebob fun song. F is for friends who do stuff together, U is for you and me. Considering Flowey's theme appears in numerous locations in the game, you can hear the fun song in a lot of parts of the soundtrack, including Hopes and Dreams, which is pretty hilarious, and once you hear it, you can never unhear it. Additionally, Sans's voice is literally just Patrick. Maybe it may no, I would never use anything from Spongebob. At the end of Undertale True Pacifist, if you go all the way back to the very first room, you can meet Asriel there where he says someone has to watch over these flowers. This this also happens if you go all the way back to the first room after beating Toriel for the first time where she'll also appear there and say, someone has to watch over these flowers. If you actually buy the Spider Donut or Spider Cider in Hotland for 9999G, Muffet will actually detect it and a different cutscene will play where Muffet doesn't even initiate her battle. A task also revealed that if you buy 500 Spider Ciders in the ruins, Muffet will act as if you bought the 9999G. Spider Donut or Spider Cider in Hotland. Flowey's voice in Undertale Genocide is actually taken from an old McDonald's commercial. That's a wonderful idea! The jukebox in Undertale is broken and the one in Deltarune is also broken. There's even dialogue that states that you may never find a working one in Deltarune. This is the real Undertale lore we should be worrying about. The Undertale fan gamer merch store lists all figurines as little buddies. However, Papyrus is labeled as an action figure and Sans is listed as an in-action figure. Some of the pixels on the conveniently shaped lamp are different colors. You'll never unsee this, you're welcome. Minecraft story mode includes a lot of Undertale quotes, which is weird but also pretty cool. If you use the sink multiple times in the true lab in Undertale after beating Memory Head, there will be text that says you really like to wash your hands. The ground in front of the lab is a different color orange than the rest of the ground. I bet you are now questioning your entire existence. If you check Metaton three times during his battle, the narrator will get extremely annoyed with you every time you check him. The screenshots on the Steam version of Undertale are ridiculously outdated for some reason. I guess Toby just never bothered to update them. We all know that Undertale is an anagram for Deltarune, but it's also an anagram for Nut Dealer. Finally, the third game. Some item names are abbreviated in battle, such as the Butterscotch Pie, which is abbreviated to the Butts Pie. However, there are times in battle when a serious mode is activated, so item name abbreviations change, such as when you fight Sans, the abbreviation for Butterscotch Pie is abbreviated to just Pie. If you name yourself MTT in Undertale, Metaton says, oh, are you promoting my brand? And the game actually allows you to play with this name. It is impossible for Asgore to age in Undertale, due to him being a boss monster. This is because boss monsters do not age until their child matches their own age. Since Asgore's son is dead, Asgore is likely to never grow older than he is now. If you name the fallen human Papyru, you'll get a text from Papyrus stating that I'll allow it. 
This is due to the character limit during the naming process and doesn't actually replace Papyrus's name. Speaking of character naming, if you name yourself Alphys during the naming process, it isn't allowed. However, if you name yourself Alfie, you'll get text saying, uh, okay, and the name is allowed to be used. If Undyne jumps after Monster Kid after he trips and falls off the bridge in Waterfall, in the following battle with her, her HP will be lowered. Toby actually stated that he wanted her armor to be cracked as well for a more visual effect, but he forgot to add it. That's cool, but have you ever wondered what would happen if Deltrune had hide and seek? 